Hello, my furry friends. My name is Fuzzy Cub, and welcome back to episode 9 of Techopolis 2. So, at the end of last episode, I said that I kind of wanted to start maybe making the place look a little bit prettier. And one of the ways I thought I could do that would be to use these four little areas. Let me just pop into free cam. Right here. And plant up a ton of crops. Just to give the place a little bit of color. But also, uh, if I want to unlock elevators, I'm going to need wool. And if you break these guys, you can make some industrial hemp fiber. And that can be turned into string, which can be turned into wool. So um, we won't have to worry about the fact that there's no sheep. <laughs> also, it gave me um, quite a lot of time to wait around and make sure all of the drawers of technium is filled and all of the ingots and alloys are completely filled up. So yeah, we're, we're, we're all full for this episode. And I mean completely full. I actually took out the downgrades out of all these alloys to make sure that we had a full drawer full of them. Oh, and I also added a constant tan between episodes. Where is it gone? This guy? No. This guy? Yeah, Constantine. I was originally going to have uh, Amethyst here, but because I put Amethyst over there, it was another spot. And hopefully this episode we will be getting Enderium here. Spoiler alert. And of course, our Technium is all filled up. This is all backed up and these are all backed up. So we're, we're doing quite well. I, I say quite well, we're actually doing a little bit too well. So well, in fact, that I've actually had to turn off all of the machines except silver and gold because all of the drawers were completely filled it was all starting to spill into the uh the chest system down below the drawers and i think having like seventeen thousand of everything for the moment is it, it, it's enough <laughs> ironically i actually added a upgrade here to this drawer to uh, make sure we had extra ruby because as you can see here Ruby can be used as a capstone and it brings it down to 50 ticks per block. That's two and a half seconds ish per operation. But I don't, I really don't think we need it at the moment. Maybe some of the later stuff like the ender ore and, and diamonds and emeralds and stuff, which we'll be unlocking today. Another spoiler. But let us get on with today's episode right after I finish planting my hemp. And there we go. After a very short time of twerking and planting, we have our four quadrants completely planted. I think I might actually change out this sugar cane because I'm not really liking it. It's a little bit too high. I might just plant another wheat over there between episodes. But we have an absolute metric butt ton of hemp. Yeah, I think this is going to be more than enough. Wool. Yeah, that, that's more than enough wool. And like I just said, we have a few things to unlock today, one of which is elevators. And because we have an absolute ton of advanced technium, I'd say we'll go on an unlocking spree. So let's have a look. Elevator book. Unlock. And submit. Nice. So that means we can now make elevators. Elevators are handy because you can never just break this stuff. But the way the elevator works is you put one elevator here and directly below it, another elevator. And you can literally just press the space bar to phase up through the elevator and then the shift button to phase down. I wish I could put it into the ground, but unfortunately, yeah, I can't break bedrock. Well, technically you probably could with the, uh, the bedrock breaking thing with the TNT and stuff, but <laughs> I don't really mind that much. Another handy thing about the elevators is if you shift and right click, it opens up this little GUI and you can make it directional. So let's see, we're facing west here now. So if I go down here, I'm facing west. No matter what direction I'm facing, when I go up, it will point me in this way. And then the other handy thing about it, let's just pop this black lapis out. If you right click with a block, it takes on the texture of that block. And shift right click, you can remove it. Shimples. I actually quite like that blue. Yeah, I think we'll leave it as blue. The next thing I want to download is I am speed. Now once again, this is just advanced technium, some sugar and some blank research papers. Grab a little bit of sugar cane, a little bit of sugar. Submit, submit, 
And now we can decide if we want to go speed one, speed two, or speed three. Ooh, we're fast. Nice. I mean, it's going to save a lot of time walking around. <laughs> walking. <laughs> uh, who walks anymore? Yeah, I mean, why walk when you can fly? Brings us to the next book we would like to unlock. This guy. A very, very special unlock. And now that we have Elite Technium automated and we have tons of gold, this should be simple for us to do. Go to the Elite Research and... Research Angel Rings. Submit. Submit. And now we should be able to make angel rings. And these are very special rings that go into your curio slots, which are the ones here. I believe it goes into the angel ring slot. Now, angel rings basically grant you creative flight. And there's a few different types. I believe this guy, this one basically eats your XP and gives you creative flight. These guys seem to use power. Let's see. Ooh, they need netherite. This guy needs lead. Oof. Needs blaze rods too. Where am I going to get blaze rods from? Um, play, oh, I can crush redstone flux coils with a pulverizer to blaze powder. And then I can use the metal press mold rod to make blaze rods. I will do anything for creative flight. Let's get some flux coils. And we need five of those to make one rod, which is all we need at the moment. Take you off. Put you on. And one blaze rod. Nice. Into fire. One blaze rod. How do I get feathers? Oh, feathers are just string. That's fine. Grab a little bit more hemp. And we grab... One feather, two feathers. I think that is everything we need apart from the diamond ring. You know what? You think I would learn by now to um plan these episodes a little bit better so that this doesn't keep on happening all the time. But um, luckily, the very next thing we need to do is unlock diamond and emeralds. So why don't we make this book? which is ruby blocks, which I think we can make. Four of those, unlock that, submit, uh, disable the crystal, enable diamond and emerald, break all this, craft up some emerald and some diamond. You know the drill. I'll set these up back in a bit. And there we go. Diamonds and emeralds automated. So that means we can finally make our angel block if we have enough diamonds in. So far, we do indeed make you. What do we need here? We need a diamond gear, which is just four diamonds. Now we can finally make the diamond ring to make the angel ring. Nice. So the angel ring goes into the ring slot and it should be as easy as pressing double space bar to fly. <gasps> oh, how I've missed you. <laughs> if you guys don't know, in my um, Vault Hunters series that I'm playing on, on the Leftovers SMP, check out my channel if you want to watch that. Still ongoing. Uh, I have a thing called an angel block, which gives me creative flight. I missed it so much. And with the speed three also, this means I can zoom around the base much easier. Now this one said it uses XP. So with 57 levels, I should be okay for a while until we get some better power options. And then we can, you know, upgrade when we get netherite and, and all this other stuff. I think the resonant one is the Best one, but you need each successive ring to make the next one. It'll just keep upgrading as we go along. And the last thing I want to unlock before we get on with the more technical side of things today is this guy right here. This is called the Time in a Bottle. 
That's <laughs> exactly what you think it is. It is time stored in a bottle. Basically, you keep the bottle in your inventory. I think there actually might even be, yeah, there's a time in a bottle slot in here as well. But as long as it's in your inventory, you basically save up the amount of time you are online. So if you're online for one hour, one hour will be stored inside your bottle. And you can use that time to speed up things such as pulverizers and, and the miners and, and whatnot. So it's very handy to have that unlocked. And again, a very easy unlock that we probably could have done two episodes ago. But I suppose a better late than never. We do need a little bit more tech books, which again is quite easy for us to do. We can even use our elite technium now. I think it's 48 that it said we needed. Yep, yeah, 48. Submit. Submit. And we can buy the time in a bottle for 32, but I actually think you can craft it. And it's um it, it's it's quite easy. It's just a clock. And then some other bits and pieces. Nice. So, like I said, you can see the stored time is 7 seconds, 8, 9. Total time accumulated is the same. Let's say we wanted to pulverize some of this ruby in here. And it's taken quite a long time to pulverize. If we shift and right click, we multiply by 2. Then if you click again, by 4, by 8, by 16, 32, all the way up to times 256. But just beware. It uses much, much more time the more you click it. So we're going to be a little bit more conservative because at the moment we have plenty of time to AFK. We don't need to speed anything up, but I'm going to store time in this thing until I need it. And don't even think about being cheeky with this one. You can only have one time in a bottle. You can't have more than one in your inventory. Okay, so moving on to today's big mod. We're going to get into Mechanism. Mechanism is a very, very handy mod, but in this pack, to be honest, not really that useful. It's just needed to get the atomic alloys because we need them to make the next in the Technium line. Ultimate Technium. So to start off with Mechanism, we need to unlock Osmium, build a miner and get backed up on some of that stuff. So let's quickly grab an Osmium book or blocks of emerald, Elite Technium, I think we probably have enough emerald now. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Let's make the Osmium book like so. Submit. Once again, disable diamond and emerald. Enable Osmium. You get the drill. I seem to spend half of these episodes just making new miners. Anywho, back in a bit. Okay, maybe back after this. <laughs> serotonin. This is gonna be the best episode ever. Speed, flying, and serotonin. Mm, but what is not the best thing ever is the good old mod maker, Ben Ben Law, who made this mod, decided in all his infinite wisdom that osmium cannot be processed by an induction smelter. Apparently, you can only use the crusher to crush into osmium dust. Or, or, or smelt it in the jumbo smelter, which I refuse to do. Though we can put it in the arc furnace, which gives you two... Hmm, Crusher or Arc Furnace. I was hoping we wouldn't have to do anything else with uh, immersive engineering. I think probably the Crusher is the best idea. The Arc Furnace does give you two from one ore, but the Arc Furnace does need these graphite electrodes, which need to be crafted. They need to make hop graphite ingots, and they have a durability, and you need three of them in the machine to actually work. Uh, I just don't think it's worth it. So uh, let's go make the crusher and set up some osmium crushing. So let's consult our manual. Heavy uh, machinery, crusher. I need 10 light engineering blocks, one redstone, 10 steel scaffolding, eight steel fence, and a nine hoppers. We have one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay. One, two, one, two, you here, and three of you, I think. Yes. Three more of you, one here, and then a redstone there. Oh, other way around. And we have that. 
with another one of you in the middle. And then on top of that, we have nine hoppers. And right click on this one at the front. And we have a crusher, which I hoped that we would never have to build because I do not like them, but mechanism says so. Okay, so let's uh, get export in there. Like that. Nice, Osmium is going in there. And then we need a connector and some insulated wire. Oh, you are loud. Oh, you are very loud. Crusher. There we go. That's much better. Let's pop our induction smelter here. Insert from the back. Oop. That should be powered. Nice. That's making osmium. Grab some of the osmium. Nice. We should have one more spare drawer. Up in the ingots there. And we just throw a importer here. Export down. And that should all go into the system. Yep, there we go. Passive osmium coming right in. So a little bit of behind the scenes fuzzy recording information. I basically record clips and then edit. So when I set up this osmium pressure, I went off, I edited. I spent nearly 40 minutes editing the last two or three clips. And when I came back, there was osmium spitting out. So I had to um, put a drawer here and have the drawer go into here moved everything over a little bit, and then put a void upgrade in this drawer. So if you're wondering why things change every now and again, and how I seem to do everything really, really fast, it's not that I'm doing it fast, it's that the way I record and edit, it's very procedural. If this was more like a live stream type of thing, believe me, it would be much, much more chaotic. But back to the matter at hand. Next, we need to unlock mechanism. And then we need to get into some of these productions of alloys and steel casings and crushers and stuff. Ooh, actually, if we unlock the crusher, that will probably mean we can get rid of this thing. Ah, I forgot about the fact that once you unlock something, it appears in the JEI, which is uh, this thing over here. So maybe as soon as we unlock that, we can replace the crusher behind us that I really hate. So let's go ahead and make the mechanism book. We, we should have enough osmium by now. Yeah, we have 95 blocks. Sounds like it will be enough. Oh, there we go there. Unlock, submit. So the most important question, does the crusher rush osmium? Uh, it looks like it does not. I mean, it's fine. We can leave it up there in the industrial area. But I really hate that crusher. Anyway, let's uh, quickly move on. Let's make up a metallurgic confuser, which is just furnaces and some redstone and some osmium and iron. Speaking of furnaces, we can probably get rid of this thing as well. Oh, I forgot how long this takes to break. Do, 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 do. <laughs> la -de -da -de -da -de -da. Oh, bye bye, a jumbo smelter. So let's grab a metallurgic infuser. A metal or what? I suppose we need to pick which side we want to use for mechanism. Hey, hold on. I know exactly how to do this. I always ask my dog, Moose. Cutest dog ever in the world, the best boy. I always ask him to pick a hand and whichever hand he sniffs first, we choose which, uh, which side it is. It's easier than making a decision myself. So uh, one second, Moose, left or right? Moose chose right. So this over here is going to be our mechanism area. Uh, so we need another lapidary dynamo. Grab one of the integral components. And this time, let's use some flux ducts, which are really easy to make because we have all this already automated. And these are basically power cables. So when you put down your laboratory dynamo, you can attach these to the front. 
put a line of them like so, and you can put down all the machines that can connect to them, instead of just having tons of lapidary dynamos, because I think this is going to produce enough power to run two or three machines. And if not, we can always throw down extra lapidary dynamos. Also, let's grab a storage request and some network cable. So let's pop you in here. And connect you up to that. Nice. Okay, so let's get this started. Let's just place it down here. We can always move it if we need to. Actually, it might not be a bad idea. Let's put the exporter wherever he's gone. There. Let's put an exporter here and the lapidary dynamo here. Then we run our flux ducts like so. That means we can power things from the bottom and the wires can stay a little bit more hidden. Come to think of it, actually, yeah, now that we can, now that we have mechanism unlocked, we could actually just make the universal cable, which stores an awful lot more power than the flux duct. And we have tons of steel and redstone, so I'll pop you here. Now you see, they are all filled up with power. Pop the metallurgy confuser on top, and you are filling up with power. There, nice. So after all that faffing around, what do we need to do with this metallurgic infusor? Well, we need to infuse things with things. Yeah, very, very scientific, fuzzy, I know. <laughs> we need to make infused alloys, basic control circuits, and advanced control circuits. For now, we'll, we'll, we'll progress a little bit further afterwards, but let's start off by making some infused alloy. So infused alloy is made by infusing redstone into infused crystalline. An infused crystalline is made with diamond, crystalline dust, and emeralds. We have this already being produced and stored in a drawer over there. And we just automated diamonds and emeralds. So let's see, get this cable over one or two more. Grab one more induction smelter. Pop you down here. Grab the export cable and export from the back. Import, export on. Just, just double check that works. There we go. Nice. That's smelting up like so. We have infused crystalline, which I assume is a quest. Indeed. And I don't know how well these play together, but I'm going to output to the right. And this guy, I'm going to input. Yeah, input on the left. Let's connect this up and see if it will work. So let's get all exported. That's working just fine. Now, will it go in here? That is the question. Yeah, yes, there we go. Nice. So we could just use redstone and put it in here like this. And it will be used up. It can fill this entire bar up. But on one redstone is only 10 millibuckets of redstone. And that's not very efficient. So what we can do is we can make an enrichment chamber, which I think might be one of the quests. No, it's not, but we're still going to make it, which is iron, basic control circuits, steel casing, which is easy enough also. Let's make one of those. And I think we just need to make two of these guys, which is redstone infused into osmium, which again, we can do. Let's just quickly switch this guy out. There we go. That's two of those. There we go. One enrichment chamber. Nice. Okay, so if we place down this enrichment chamber here, it should be powered up. And what we can do now is put redstone dust into the enrichment chamber. And that will get enriched into enriched redstone. And instead of one redstone giving 10 millibuckets of infusion power, this one gives 80. Oh, basically it's eight times more efficient. Wow, these are loud. So after a little bit of tinkering around with the inputs and the outputs, I have switched this around a little bit. This guy is still producing the infused crystalline, but it's actually outputting to the other side now. So it's outputting to this slot. And then this guy is automatically making redstone, infusing it. And then it's inputting on the extra yellow slot, which means it goes into here. So for all intents and purposes, we have automated infused alloy. So we should probably also try and do the same thing for basic control circuits too. Want more enrichment chamber. One more metallurgic infuser. You 
and get redstone. The back we input that automatically inputting. Okay. Double checking is still getting power. Here it is. You can also get redstone. Input from the back. Auto eject on. Output to the right. You can get input extra from the left so that you fill up. Nice. And then you also need osmium. Like so. And we get back input. Nice. So we have automatic infused alloy and automatic basic control circuit. Nice. Let's grab two more drawers. Pop up here, pop up here, and I think, and I think we can output to the top with auto inject on. Correct. There we go. Same thing. Auto inject on, output to the top, quantify and lock. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I need to do something. Oh, so much better. So from the time that we unlocked mechanism until now, so we have automated both the infused and the basic control circuits, it has been two hours or so. And that is including editing time. Although the editing time is basically just where everything fills up while I'm doing other stuff. But uh, we're making very, very good progress. So next on the list is steel casing, which we've already made, but we'll make it some more because I do want to get that crusher made. And the reason I want that crusher made is because we need energy upgrades and speed upgrades, and we need gold dust and osmium dust. I'm sure you can do it in the pulverizer, but I mean, we can, we can, we can use a crusher. It's easy enough. But also before I forget, so put link cable on this one, link cable on this one, and that should be showing up in the system. Maybe we put a tier one upgrade on both of these guys at least, and then they can back up to a little bit more than 64. I think it goes up to about 128, which would be four times the drawer's capacity divided by two, which is double. I, I'm not good at math. Just, it's more, okay, it's more. <laughs> So one steel casing. Oh, we made eight. There we go. Then the crusher is easy enough. I'm not sure if we have lava buckets. No, but they're easily made. Oh, I love being able to fly. So crusher. And a beep. How's our lapidary dynamo doing? Hey, he's not doing too badly. Fueling one, two, three, four, five, six machines. I know they're not all running at the same time, but he did good. Okay, so what we need for this, we need glass automated, infused alloy automated, gold dust. We can just crush up some gold dust. This one, the same thing, but just some osmium. Osmium. Oh, we have some osmium dust. That's probably from when to spit out of the, uh, the other crusher. Nice. So gold dust. And once again, let's see, let's make two energies and five speed upgrades. So the thing about speed upgrades, when you put them in, you can, you, you can put them in one by one like this by uploading them here, or you can shift click and put them all in. This now takes, I think at least five times more power. So having the energy upgrades balances out a little bit, but you need to you need to be very careful about the amount of upgrades you put in because that's probably going to de like destroy our yeah destroy our power coming out of there. It's tanking. Wow. So yeah, we need to maybe only have two of those in. There we go. Some two of those in until we can make some more energy upgrades. So let's see, eight energy upgrades, because eight is the maximum we can put in any of these machines. So we are at eight of eight. Let's see, see how many these speed upgrades do. Still going up, still going up. 
No, I'm going to spare you guys the next 15 minutes of that recording that I was just editing. It's basically me playing around with the amount of upgrades and everything. But I just solved that problem by adding a lot more lapidary dynamos. So these machines are all completely kitted out with eight and eight of each, and they are super fast. Meaning we can continue now with the rest of this. So the next thing we need to automate is advanced control circuits. And these are quite easy. I think it's literally just combining the two things that we automated. And to do that, we're gonna use, you guessed it, a basic auto crafting table. Like so. Let's grab another wooden hopper, a drawer, spruce, because obviously best wood, um, link cables. And I think that's about it for now. Oh, and an exporter. So what we want to do is we want to get these guys in here. So we need to automatically craft them by using this export cable connected to here. We need to export one of these and one of these into here. And let's take like a stack of each. All those machines should start kicking into working order again, producing all the stuff that we took out. That guy in the middle. And you like that. And we click a recipe, select, uh, should be a saved recipe. Nice. And of course, one downgrade, Boop. lock and quantify, add a link cable, and we should now have these added to the system. There we go. Coming in slowly. Do you not import? Hmm. Maybe. We need a two by two drawer with a stocking upgrade. So two by two here. With an export, stocking upgrade, take 16 of those, and eight of those. You in there, you in there. Lock and quantify, and I should. Yeah, there we go, that's working now. That means when this guy fills up to 64, this drawer should only have 16 and eight of these in. Moment of truth. Will you stay at 16? Yes. So we have a, a drawer full of 64. This is full of 64 and this is full of 64. So yes, one more thing. Automated. Let's take one for the quest. Unfortunately, it is 1 a.m. my time. And I am getting to be a very, very tired bear because it's been a very long day. And I've spent almost three hours working on this. So I'm going to edit up this video and I'm going to release what we have already. And next episode, we will complete this automation line and hopefully get Elite Technium automated. Just need to do a little bit of power, a little bit of uranium smelting, and we should be able to do it in the next episode. So if you liked today's episode, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave a comment about what you think about my setup, about the base, about anything really. I really like reading your guys' comments. And while you're down there in the comment section, why don't you join the Fuzzy Family Members area? Members get special privileges during live streams. You get to use really, really cool emojis. And you get a shout out at the end of every single video. Just like these wonderful people who help me make content just like this. And until the next time, bye-bye! I'm so happy I can fly.